this save. This is not anything you should pay attention to. This is for me to warm up on. The only thing that might be worth seeing here is how I clone. So I use a normal N64 controller because I, for A and Z mashing, it's significantly easier. They're the same, they're the same input for the game, or they're the same, uh, they're, they do the same thing, but they're not considered the same input, so you can alternate frames for A and Z for anything that is a pickup or, or text mashing. That's why, why A and Z text mashing is the fastest. Uh, let me do something real quick. So you can see how I clone. I... I mash like this, like I'm pressing the buttons at the same time, but then I turn the controller down. So I'm still pressing it as if the controller was flat, but I turn the controller like this, so that I press one button and then the next button. So I clone like this. And that was a four in that case. I find that the easiest way to mash for this. Because then you don't have to worry about like alternating or anything. It's just I'm single button mashing, but turning the controller in such a way that I'm hitting the inputs one, hopefully one frame apart. Heh. <laughs> if only it were that easy, but no, it's, it's this. The only issue is my shoulder is... I haven't, I used to play baseball, so I have old injuries like messed up shoulder. <laughs> All right. Now let's talk about Death Dupe. Talk about Death Dupe. Okay, so I think I think you've heard some of this, but I'm gonna go over all the same shit. Um, so the game has always starts on the same RNG seed, no matter what, unless you beat Mammon and load like come from a different save. That's the only time the RNG is different. But every time you turn on the console and hit new, the RNG seed that it starts with is exactly the same. Hey, Bolden, how's it going, bud? So for the sake of recording, I'm just going to local cord. Three, two, one, and go. I have my timer up. It doesn't matter. A and Z match to get through text. Start, right, and right as it turns blue, you press start, and it turns the text speed to max. So I should have max text speed. We can get check real quick because it's not going to... So I have max text speed, you can see there. But you can just, like, you're holding right. Oh, something to pay attention to um, for that is you don't want to hit A and then right one frame apart because you will actually switch screens. So let me show you. If I press A, normally you control this, but if you press A and right at the correct time, you actually change menu screens. And if I go back to that other screen, you actually have control of this. It's a weird thing that happens. Um, just, you want to be more than a frame apart. Hi, dear. Crash. I'm sorry. Put your normal shoes on, then. And they got the teeth dry, but they're so weak and fucking. Then put your you know normal shoes on. This is no way it's going to get wet. Oh, it's... I'm sorry. It's the side wants to still come. Hmm. So after I walk into it. So I me down on Amazon and look for winter walking. Walking. Yes. And they should be. You here. probably got hiking boots then. Those are comfy. Oh, that's what I'm saying. They have non slip soles and they have like a thing on the inside. That keep... Yeah. Like... Next! It fucking snows. I'm ready to walk in the end. Okay. Some bitches. I'm just explaining to us now. Here. <laughs> Love you, Tess. So, as long as you're consistent with your time, even taking these turns wide like this, the RNG will be the same. So my expectation for me, I have an RNG minute that I'm going to try to do here. There's really nothing to add. You can't. You understand death loop and stuff, so there's nothing. There's some specific timing things that I'm gonna have to go dig through some old videos for. Um, but in terms of all of this, you kind of you do what you see here. Talk. You press up once. Hit A. I'm explaining. Hold on. 
thank you. Yeah, because you how rude it was when you gave it me when you back. Thank you. So don't don't be all indignant. I'm not. Get what you get. Thank back. you. Got what you get. Thank you. Got to talk karma. Finish. So I'm looking for kind of right that tree, and then I'm turning right before this tree. And I didn't do this right, so this is not the right. I want to get out the first turn here. So this is a two-turn encounter. I want it for the RNG manip that I do. I want the first turn, so I need to turn a little earlier. That's my RNG manip. So I'm gonna get an encounter right here. Two hellhounds. First one hits for four, depending on. Oh no, I. Okay, so we. Even though I got the same encounter, I loaded into the encounter differently. So if I had been hit by the first guy, he would have hit me for four. But because I got, I didn't get hit at all, it completely changes it. Oh, okay. Uh, so use this guy for our, you know, stat grind. Really nothing special to do here. There is specific timing. Um, I can't remember for Parasol and Bumbershoot, one of them, you want to, if, if the camera zooms in on them, you want to cast a spell when one of them's in the air and the other one's on the ground, and I don't remember which is which right now. I'm not going to risk that, as he'll always do four when I want to explain something. Right, we're here is perfectly fine. So for them, if you're far enough away, you can just dodge it by running forward and to the right, spinning the same direction like that. You can dodge their attack. I only get into two. That's that's why I do the RNG minip because I know what encounters I'm getting. If I do my RNG minip, minip correctly, then I get one Hellhound encounter at that corner, and then nothing by the time I get over here. You re really just need to go for it, and the big thing is remembering the encounters you run across. So, like, I, there's a lot of different encounter pathings that I remember because I've just seen it so damn much. If your movement is consistent, it'll be a lot easier to consistently get here because you know what to expect. So, if you choose something in the background to aim at, it'll be the best way for you to find a path, like, exact path. So the thing here is I always like to turn the camera behind me and look how much I move the thumbstick up. It's about that much and then I press B and then C. And you want to wait a fraction of a second after you stop moving because you're actually still considered moving for like just a smidge. I think it's in the hair. Okay. Well this can't hit me. So I was a little early. I want him to be all the way in the air. And that was the idea. He didn't teleport, which means that was a bit too early. Yeah. It's like 0.359 of a second <laughs> or something. But you want you want to wait. And it's also worth waiting anyway, because sometimes you might get an encounter as you start moving and you'll accidentally press B out of it. I like to, for me, I like to choose something in the background. Those trees are really good reference points. So, like, I'm aiming, I line up uh, Brian's hair with objects in the background. In this case, there's that tree to the right of this one tree. Left. Uh, this, that close tree right there, not this one. But this one is kind of my standard reference point. That's the main tree I use. And I like to use the gap between that tree and the tree to the right. Like, right here. This is where I generally start. And then I'll swing anywhere from these group of trees is kind of what I use as reference points for aiming at stuff. Um, if I were to continually move back and forth facing this one direction, I would generally get the same encounter because of how weird the RNG is. So I like to just do this. And the other side of that is if you can consistently, like from an RNG minute that you use, you can consistently get here and then choose a different angle every time you start up. Maybe you'll find an angle, like, oh, look, I spin 30 times and then I aim right at this tree and I'll always get an encounter. Like, you could theoretically manip a death dupe, but it's just... The issue is I've spent so much time changing, like, using the RNG manip that I have. 
and then changing the starting angle and just not finding anything useful until I go at just really bizarre angles, but at that point I've already had like two or three bad encounters. Usually it's when I get really scuffed uh, starts that I actually get dupes. And there is a bit of a timing thing when it comes to... I think there's actually... okay. Okay, right there. Oh, that's... Oh, he'll kill me. That's fine. So, we'll use this as a dupe for the sake of... Hey, not the it bud. For the sake of, uh, since it wasn't a perfect dupe, I can show you the spirits that you want to pick up. There you go. That's a death dupe. Thank you for the, the gift. Congratulations, Nocti. So, at this point, I like to consistently aim at this corner right here, because sometimes you get a wear hair, sometimes you don't. It's not a huge deal. Um, the highest enemy agility in this area, in this entire area, is 8. That's a Hellhound. Perfect. We got a wear hair first, which means we're going to have 8 agility. In this case, I'm going to kill the encounter just because it doesn't matter. Something you can do, uh, it's something called Victory Animation Cancel. Um, there is a 1-2 frame window when an encounter ends that you can start to cast a spell. If you can cast heal fast enough, it's faster to watch that animation than watch Brian's victory animation. Hence, victory animation cancel. Uh, it's not super necessary, but... So you pretty much agility glitch every encounter here. Soul Searcher too. If you get three wear hairs, it's worth going through the encounter and Soul Searching, because they're just not scary. Uh, this spirit is, I want to say it's like 10 seconds to get. To go out of your way and get, from what I remember. And I'm not putting any in water. We have enough water. 32, it's it's about 12 seconds. And I, I got no encounters. Usually you get an encounter or two with that one as well. Oh, zero. Thank you for two gifted subs. Congrats, Emmy. Again, agility glitch. This is pretty, you know, straightforward. If you get really low, uh, you can always go into uh, Dondran and pick up that spirit if you didn't get, like, a huge dupe. If you get, like, 30 plus, you don't really need to go out of your way to, like, Dondran. That's unnecessary at that point. You probably won't even need to go to Glencoe. Pick up the spirit from over the wall. And we're just agility glitching. I have 11 agility already. If we can get 16 perfect, because that's the fastest enemy in Connor Fortress, that is a Kobold. Kobold have 16, everything else has 11 or less. Um, if there's... It, sometimes it's worth, if you have encounters where there's multiple enemies, like three plus enemies, sometimes it's worth taking two turns, if you can get out in a second turn, just to cast Soul Searcher twice, just for that MP, because you're not always guaranteed. If you get six bats, hi dear. Um, it's generally worth soul searching and going out of that encounter. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Ten. This is not a great encounter. Hello. All right, that's victory animation cancel. Notice how there's no audio. Side effect of victory animation cancel. So I used to use this tree uh, as the out of bounds spot because the battle arena area for before um, Connor Fortress, the max distance that you can get is either right around this tree, it goes to about here, or this tree. And I think this tree gives you a little bit more agility, so I use this one. So for reference, it's the sixth tree out from there. That's the one I use for the agility glitching. Hey, Kazi. You can use either of those there. It's more or less the same. And then I like to use right here as the other spot. If we get, uh, no matter what encounter we get, um, here, if we had gotten an encounter, let me put it this way. If I had gotten an encounter before that first spirit, I still would have gone and cloned that first spirit, but I would have gone out and started agility glitching. And then I would have gone in and gone to the second spirit no matter what. But because I didn't get an encounter, I'm going to go to the second spirit no matter what. Just a, a thought process thing. 
That was a bad dupe. There we go. Also, hi, Irene. Sorry, I didn't say hi to you. Uh... Yeah, sorry, Kazi. It's stuff you already saw, dude. <laughs> Alright, so the other thing is you kind of want to kill... Like, it's worth risking... Um, it's worth risking killing at, like, one or two bat encounters if you can kill them quickly uh, because of Celine's Bell. It's a useful item drop that you can get. Um, mostly for... It's useful for two out-of-bounds. The one in uh, Boil Hole... But more specifically, the one in uh, East Limeland, since you have to do a compression out of bounds to get out of bounds there. So this is the agility glitch. You're going to soul search or two and agility glitch all these. If you decide uh, you don't have to do the water route, you can just do earth. Uh, but I would still suggest getting at least 25 water. Um, if you don't get up to 34 water, which is Soul Searcher 2, then it's fine. Just do Rock Shower, or you can do Weaken All, which I think you also get at 34. Earth. And Weaken All... Actually, do Weaken All, because you'll probably have... I think Rock Shower is 33 and Weaken All is 34. Earth. So just do Weaken All. It's kind of the Earth, the earth equivalent of Soul Searcher, but Soul Searcher... Uh, Weaken All does lag just a little bit. Not nearly as badly, or not, not that it lags, it's a, it's a slower animation, but not as bad as uh, Rock Shower will lag. And you always try to take healthy hits if you can in Soul Searcher too. I like to stay full health, it's not necessary, but you get experience, and MP experience is a... You need it in this run. This is just the MP grind, or the agility grind. So the goal is to have 48 agility when we go into Solvering. So we want to have about 44 when we're out here for the last time. We'll go in, the first encounter will get us to 46, and by the time we get to Solvering, we should have about 48. If we don't get that much, if we get like 42 when we're out here, 41, 42, um, then at that point you don't go for you can go for extra agility, but you could just take the uh, extra encounter at a call hazard, the extra agility encounter for the out of bounds, and that'll get you to a, um, just like slightly less, but nearly the same. Hey Green Bean, how's it going? So this is just agility grinding, nothing particularly special here. Um, if you do get six bats, again, you do want to kill kill like one of those encounters but you probably want to take two turns in soul searcher because just the mp is worth it so it's one two and then just spin around this tree and you'll see that the battle arena is always exactly the same spot it's always going to be right there no hey Kawhi, how's it going bud this is for uh, zero suit mater who's learning this it's easier to explain if I if I can talk about it instead of over text. You don't need to mash Ainsley like I do to get the agility glitch. I'm just I like to mash. It's very very easy to tap. Uh, I'm doing all right. He's gotten death dupe already, so he's, he's on his way. Oh, this one, I'll do a very lazy A tap and get agility glitch. It's agility glitch is like almost a second. All right, I got it. It's it's not hard. <laughs> Just like to be. I mean, the mashing is to make sure, but you can very lazily tap it and get it. I just like to, again, like the mash. And there's also animation canceling with some stuff. So like you can slide into the hitbox of doors or screen transitions with this opening spell menu and like cast heal. And as soon as the spell finishes, you immediately either open the door 
or uh, go through the transition. You can also do it with chests, and you can also do it with talking to people. And I like to do that. Uh, we, we're going to have the perfect amount. I have 40. This will put us to 42. We'll go out one more time, have 44. I forgot to do split. You don't need to have nearly as many splits as I do. Just, I like to know what all was good or bad for portions of the run. Hey, Sour Toast. No, not ESA. This is for Zero Suit Mater, who's learning any percent. How's it going, bud? And that should be the last one. We're at 42, so I'm just gonna get one more encounter. Agility glitch this one last time. Soul Searcher. We didn't get great encounters. Usually you'd get 16 off this. We did really not. I am not an ESA. We did not get good encounters. And then we're going to go in here. This, so these boots you want to save for uh, the boil hole out of bounds. You use them for that setup. So grab the spirit, put it in. Oh, I put one in water. But this is what I was talking about. You can clone stuff. Or not clone. You can um, heal and then cancel the animation by opening a chest or something. Uh, hey, Banan. This... Jesus. Yo, Peregrine. Thank you for two months in a row. How's it going, bud? How you doing, Banan? Um, this is only one run, and it was a 36 death dupe, so it was alright. This is more explanation for Zero Suit Mater, who is learning any percent. So if you want another quest runner, go follow Zero Suit. He's in the chat right now. It's pretty great, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> Enjoy the emotes, of course. Welcome to Bing's Wings, everyone. So you can fight this encounter if you're not in a good spot. So, like, I also know I can line this up like this and walking water. Oh, I didn't quite have the angle. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the, the uh, memory pack we used to have doesn't work anymore. <laughs> the one I had when I was a kid. We didn't get a drop. You don't really necessarily need to do those encounters, but the the ceiling's bell is so useful for the uh, East Lineland Out of Bounds that it's kind of worthwhile to take one or two. That's, that's really a preference thing for... Um, getting a ceiling's bell. And you agility glitch every single encounter in here. Soul searcher as much as you can. <laughs> Group. Alright, we have 47. We'll, all, we'll have probably have 48 with this last encounter. We actually didn't get very good uh, encounter positions for stuff. I'm gonna kill this one too because I can definitely line this one up. Didn't get the victory animation cancel. And get a Celine's Bell. Alright, great. Alright, heal there, split here for me. Uh I'm not this is just the the, the any percent route as is. I'm not gonna show the defense grind. The defense grind would be like glitchless. You would grind here the 63 HP without melee. Um, pick up that item, fight him. You can skip that, uh, mint leaves if you do. It can potentially save, I think, something like 15 seconds, but you have to not need it for Zels. Or not 15 seconds, like 12 seconds or something. But uh, you have to basically not need it for Zels. So I'm going to double ice knife here, and then I'm going to water pillar because I'll probably he's 101 damage. I think this will do just enough. All Earth here. I have 18. So I'm going to clone the next one. It's going to put me at 22. I pick up the first one in the next area. It's 23. The last one before the boat, 24. If I pick up the two in West Caramel, that's 26. The one before Call Hazard, 27. Then we go into Normoon, there's three there, that puts us at 30. I clone the first one that's at 34 in Windward, and then there's two more that'll put me exactly at 36. So, I happen to remember where everything, all the fucking spirits are in this game, so I can 
and that's why learning all spirits is useful because you know where it all is and you can map out where you need to go um or i cannot i can clone the second spirit in windward and not pick up the two in uh west Carmel because i hate those spirits and i'm probably going to do that because i hate those spirits so this is an agility glitch the you want to do an agility glitch here because of the 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 um the solvering map is a separate map in terms of its it's a uh, it's grid so you're at like a low x and y coordinate and then you come out here and you're a high x and y coordinate so it's worth getting this agility glitch here and again i'm just gonna kill this because ceiling's bell We didn't get it, that's fine. No ceilings bell, that's okay. And then we clone this guy. We get four. We have 49 agility. We want to get one encounter in this spot before we go to the next map. Perfect, because it'll I think it'll put us at about 51. Hey RP, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, it feels great to do that fight in the speedrun. 50, almost 51. We didn't get perfect encounters. We usually have 51, but we have 50.9. And we'll agility glitch this. It's it's fine. Don't need to worry about taking that hit, but we did. I like to stay full health. It's not necessary, but it's it's a personal preference for me. Just because I know I'm getting the extra MP. This dewdrop isn't necessary. This this is what I call the backup item in case you have a bad fight or you get unlucky with confusion or something and then you just need to quickly use an item to get MP that you don't want to use a full MP item. That is truly 100% just a backup safety. Put this one under Earth. And because of the the amount of spirits I have, I'm going to uh, not go into Glinka. I'm going to soul search for these encounters because they don't take too long two turns and you usually have a lot of enemies in these encounters so it's worth uh in some cases if you have like four ish enemies it's usually worth taking two turns to soul searcher twice especially because mp is such a premium if you do the defense grind it's not that big a deal but if you don't do the defense grind it's so difficult to get the correct amount of uh, mp and we're agility glitching every encounter here we should end with about 54. All right, so I'm gonna move forward here. If I get, I'm gonna take a second turn. I think we can get out. It'll be close if we do. Nah. I shouldn't have taken two turns. Hey, Nani, how's it going? Laney stuff. But three turns is fine. We still got some MP experience that we desperately, desperately need. I can't stress enough how much of a pain it is to get the correct amount of MP this run. Sucks. All right. Soul search one. Don't need to soul search two since there's only one enemy. Fifty-three. Hopefully we get an agility glitch right here. This would be optimal. Perfect. You can kill this encounter if you want to, uh, since they drop. They have a chance of dropping a spirit light. I don't have uh, Avalanche yet. I'm one off that, so I'm not gonna fight it. I thought I had it. I was paying attention. Uh, just an extra healing item. It's not like if you feel lucky in a particular encounter and you have Avalanche, maybe it's worth doing one. They only have like uh, I think they have like 90 HP or something. I don't remember offhand. Two rocks would also kill them. Like with this much. I'm gonna grab this spirit. Also, if you're really, really low and you have return, you can go directly to Larapul in the next thing and then clone the two spirits in West Carmel with return. It's a bit slower, but if you need the spirits and you have return, it's worth doing. Um, it gives you a fair bit. It's two of them. You don't want to do that with the one right before Call Hazard. It's too far out of the way. But the other two is not the worst thing in the world to do. Especially if you need the spirits. Now we have 54, it's exactly what I want. We're gonna try to get to 59 before we get into Call Hazard, but we'll probably end up going into Call Hazard with about 57, which is perfectly fine. I actually cast escape here. Those guys are slow. 
The only... nothing is fast enough for us agility-wise at this point. The, the next fastest enemy that even comes close is Wyvern, and they have 54. So, split here. In the boat. So, there's two... This is where the route converges just ever so slightly. The optimal route... I'll also, zoom out here by pressing L. It lags less. I have zero idea why. But if you do that, it lags a lot less. You don't have to move, you can immediately start talking to Efna. So this save here is where the route diverges. So if you don't want to do any safety strats, um, you save here, and then you death warp after, um, after Nepti. Did anyone take those tickets that are sitting there? Good. Um... You would, you would die at Nepti, or after you fight Nepti with the agility, you go back in the end of Blue Cave, agility glitch, whatever. You die and you respawn here and you go back to the boat. However, we're going to do the safety setup, so that's just showing this is what you would do the optimal route. You would do this. Also, go around the tree this way. It lags less. Otherwise, it would lag to about here if you go the other way around the tree. Again, I don't know why. It's just a thing that it does. So the two spirits I'm talking about uh, is the one that's right above us and the one that's on the next hill. We're not going to do either of those because they're a bit too far out of the way. But if you need spirits, they're not the worst thing to grab. I just don't like getting them because you always end up getting a bunch of encounters. Fifty-five agility. We're agility glitching everything here. And trying to take any enemy that hits multiple times, you just want to take the hits if you can. Five point four five. We're pretty good agility wise. Um, so we go up here, grab the blue wings, because this is for after Zells. Uh, there is an argument that school put together that it might you don't necessarily need to do this, but I still think this is much faster to get blue wings. I don't know. I don't know if school's timed it yet, but I'm I'm pretty sure this is significantly faster. And that's for after Zels. And of course, if you're feeling unlucky, you can always save at the the inn before um, call hazard, but you don't need to. This corner is laggy. It's just a bad angle corner. There's nothing. I just didn't hit right C. Yeah, look at that we get. To do empty. Fifty-five point seven. We'll probably get in there with fifty-six. And any enemy that casts a fireball spell, one, uh, two, or three, always run perpendicular to them. Generally, you'll dodge. If you're far enough away, you'll generally dodge most of them because of the way the spell casts. Because they don't go straight forward, they actually go out and then curve back to you. When I say angle is bad, I mean it's a le the, the camera angle is laggy. Just that particular spot is laggy. And we're going to agility glitch still all the way down here. Since they don't move much, I'm actually going to take two turns here, because they're just going to hop once or twice and then cast Ice Knight. And a little bit of extra MP, I like. If there's four plus enemies, usually it's worth taking an extra turn to get out, just so you can cast Soul Searcher twice. Just Because if, if you don't end up with enough MP by the time you get to Brunach Castle, um, you have to basically grind your MP there on the, the knights, and that sucks. There's two ways to do it. If you don't have enough fire, then it's Soul Searcher 2, but if you have enough fire, then you want to use um, Homing Arrow 2. That'll be the optimal way to get MP there, but it's the spell is slow. Alright. And just ignore the... Oh, you can't even see the splits anyway. That's good, because <laughs> they're red. Save here, or heal here, and then split. 
So we are, what is our agility? 57, 56.6. We might get 59, but we'll probably have 58. We didn't get perfect agility encounters, but if you, if you, it's worth checking your agility while you're doing this. When you get to a certain point, you want to stop because you want, you don't want to have more than 59 because not that having more agility is bad, but the setup makes it awkward. And 59 is like, you don't want to go too high um, because then you're wasting time getting agility with encounters. But you don't want to be too low because it's hard to set up. But if you go 59, it puts us in a nice spot that we'll have 70, 70 71 agility by the time we get into uh, the Isle of Sky so that we can only have to deal with uh, the fish stick as the one enemy that's too fast. Because in the Isle of Sky, it's like 32 or 30, 32 or 32, 34 or something. 70 and then 75 which is the fish stick and 70 is pixies so before we would get the isle of sky with like 68 and then there's two encounters you have to or two enemies you have to worry about but with this a little bit of extra agility you end up with 70 71 so then it's only the fish stick then that's why like having the specific agilities it's you you want to get to just the barely there Because then you're uh, like, if you get more, it's not bad to have the agility, but you're wasting time, right? You're you're spending too much time getting agility. So like, if you if you get to like 57 or so, 57 and change in West Karma, I'll just stop doing agility glitch until you get in here, and then you just want to check between encounters. Like, oh, I have I have 58. I know I'm gonna get 40% of a level between that last spot and this next spot. So what, I'm, I'm 57, 50, 43, 50, I'll probably be, right, we'll check right before we, 57, 43, we'll probably get an encounter almost immediately. Do that, take the hits, go out. Yeah, actually that gave me 24, so it was a lot less. Usually that gives you 40. Hmm. I say 23 or 43. I don't remember now. Point is, keep track of your agility. <laughs> 7, 83. So yeah, we're probably going to be 58 and change. So we were a little bit off. Okay. One more encounter here. Take hits. Eight. Great. Heal. Perfect. Yeah, 58, 15. We're gonna be. I'm not gonna grab. Actually, I'm not gonna grab the extra encounter because I'm gonna have 58 point like six or seven. So I know I'll be okay. Um, but you can you can get the extra encounter. It's not a huge deal. All right. So this is not an encounter I want. I want you to die. So I'm just gonna kill him because I don't like him. No other reason. Because I know I can work with these. Oh, actually, I, I was dumb. I didn't even need to do that. This spot is in the setup. I thought it. I was looking at the wrong encounter in my brain. Not the right setup. Can't really do it with that encounter. So we need to have uh, an encounter here. So what I say? 58, 50. Yeah, it's fine. Not gonna agility glitch this one. All right. So this time. I'm going to use a, a finger here for you. So there is a spot, this little thing right there, that spot, that is what I use for the lineup, right? Let me turn the camera some more. Oh, I hate the camera in this game sometimes. That's right there, that spot. That's what I use. You wanna stand between here and here. And if you have 59 agility, you stand directly above that spot. So since I have 58, I'm gonna just move just ever so slightly left, basically the same spot. And since I don't have magic barrier, I'm gonna use spirit armor just for the safety. Yeah. Cast that, let Wyvern do his thing. And then you see this angle, how I have to, yeah, I'm kind of clipping into it. This is, this'll, this'll work. So I like to have the camera angle this way and just hold down. And then you kind of just go into that angle where the where my little blue movement arena here let me make this visible again where my where the blue movement arena meets the edge 
that's kind of the corner you want to walk towards. And you want to very, very slowly move back left and right. And when I say, I was saying wiggle last night, that was a wrong choice of words. When I mean move slowly back and forth, I mean like, like, uh, like the, like this. Just very slowly. And not a huge amount. Zero, I have to say, Death Dupe is by far the hardest trick. These out, these out of bounds are much easier if you know how to set them up. But yeah, it's a very, you like, you want to move very, very slightly. Not a whole lot, but you want to just wiggle back and forth like that much of an angle into the corner when you're walking. And it'll allow you to get out of bounds. Part of it is you had a weird agility, so the, the spot you had to set up for was different. I have an agility that I always aim to get for, so I know the spot I need to stand at. That's why it was easy for me. Because I have a setup for the agility I have. That's the only reason. Yes. Death Dupe is by far the hardest trick in this game. Thought I heard my email go off. Alright, so this is where we use the compass. I'm just running east and kind of keeping a visual tab on the uh, path. Compass is your best friend out of bounds, so knowing the layout of the map, compass-wise, is good to do. So this is where that chest is. This is where you can get the extra encounter for agility. You just run on the wall there, and whatever encounter is, you agility glitch. And then when you escape, you want to go this way, so you can just get a little bit more agility when you you get out. I'm not going to do it because I, I, I think I have an okay amount of agility. And then we're running north along the east wall of the map. It's The map is shaped like a J. Really. So you kinda, it's like a little squiggle and then a J is the whole map. Yep, there is uh, the, the map of the dungeons on um, speedrun.com. Cal actually exported the the map of Call Hazard directly from the game. Um, once once I have time, I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna draw lines on the actual physical maps of the game that Cal has exported with the route. You having fun here? I love you. Say hi to chat, Andromeda. Andromeda won't say hi to you. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm mean. And she's not a dick, I'm a dick. So this area, where that little... That <laughs> Peregrine says he's... he loves me. Wait, I think he's fine to win. So when, when I was saying the little area, you see where that door is? This is the, the last area where you can get an encounter. You want to be right above that corner. And you won't drop down if you do that. So I like to run around here. About to here. And I turn that camera and just run right pretty much at that corner. And generally you'll get an encounter. This is a four, so even if I couldn't get out the first turn, I would have uh, taken two turns. But I'll run towards the exit. Soul Search 2, MP, yay, nice. And now I have 61.79. If if we had done everything optimally, I would have 62 point... I think it's 2 or 4. So we're only like half an agility level off, which is fine. It's all that. I just love you. <laughs> Alright, so this... I know where the map is, so we're turning this way. I just want to stay just far enough away. You don't want to actually touch the walls because you'll just get annoyingly stuck. It's easier to be a little bit further away, kind of keep your head, keep your distance so that you can keep it, um, you don't get, you don't touch it and you suddenly are like stuck. Sometimes there's weird walls. All right. And we get into here, go into Dormoon, bring us back inbounds. We're gonna grab the three spirits here. There are four items in the, uh, the windmills. In the left windmill, there is two healing items. In the right windmill, there is a healing item and an MP item. If you want to get them, they're not bad to get. 
Uh, there's also this house directly in it. No, it's not. Not this house with the the wings, but this house, the lady in here gives you a honey bread if you don't have one. That's worth grabbing if you don't have a honey bread. You can also, when you come out of that door, if you don't go all that way, you can just, or don't get all that other stuff, you come in here to grab uh, the last spirit here. Then hope he's not playing defense. Immediately clone this first spirit. Hey, Shiner. Into Earth. Good, that was four. <clears throat> and we're gonna do one agility glitch. Exactly one. We don't need to do any more than one. Unless you're really low in agility, but even then you're not gonna get much agility. We're gonna do one agility glitch. This guy's... I'll actually take two turns here. Turn the camera away. Soul Searcher 2. The next guy will probably just heal. Let's get far enough away, that's what I do. So, one agility glitch that puts us at 65.5. We want 66, but 65 is also fine. We'll probably end up with 70 on the dot agility. No more agility glitching. Just want to get out of encounters, Soul Searcher 2. You can go get the extra healing item back there. Uh, I'm not going to. I'm just going to grab this, and I'm going to clone this other spirit. Can't clone this one, unfortunately. You can get there's also a honey bread in the back room there. There's there's also a healing item. If you didn't know, there's a healing item back here that you can get. That's the 150. Clone this one. This is because I want to have. I personally want to have 36. So, perfect. Put that one there. Nah, don't- you could agility glitch, but I'm not going to. I have enough agility, as I said. Great, lots of enemies. I'm actually going to- This is gonna lag, then like, no matter what, these guys kinda la are laggy. Just cause of the- How much there is, so. Sometimes it's not worth- taking the extra uh, turn for MP, but having the MP is just nice. Losing 10 seconds to take two turns in a six enemy encounter is better than losing a minute at the end of the game when you have to take two or three enemy encounters to get MP. If you get a Lamaya, good luck. You know, if you have Magic Barrier, use it. <laughs> You don't use spirit armor and hope for the best. Yeah, don't don't run up to the spiders. I always will run immediately out of the encounter instead of trying to get extra area. All right, this. So there's two strats you can do here. You can run at him and do a slide, and if 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 you have enough MP or enough uh, earth, then you can just run up and use magic barrier, which is what I prefer to do. Uh, if you don't have magic barrier, then run up and do a slide to get a little extra distance. You want to bait out his mid-range attack, which I am still really, really bad at. Um, and then you just want to drop avalanche on him and hope it hits. He's going to do that. You run at him. Running at him is the best way to dodge it because sometimes he runs really close. It's about this distance, I think. About about this distance is uh um. What's that, about four and a half, four or five grinds of distance from him? That's about how far you want to be to cast the Avalanche, and also how far it is for him to um, do his mid-range. It's a good frame of reference, right? Uh, I'm a little too close. Alright, so we're gonna actually use this. I'm still too close. Nice. Alright, so I'm gonna... Like I said, I'm bad at baiting out his mid-range for whatever reason. I know exactly what the distance is, and I'm still bad at it. There we go. And run at him. If he runs up to you and does the cast from here, which he can do, it happens. You don't want to run at him. You want to run, like, right next to him, because otherwise you can still get hit when you're here. But if you're here, you can dodge it. It'll happen. 
at some point. You'll be like, oh, he's going to do his, his uh, you know, short range, but he does his mid range for no reason whatsoever. And he needs like one and a half more hits. Right, he's dead. Zels, if you can hit him, is kind of whatever. Right, we're going to put that into Earth. I'm actually going to clone this last one into Earth. Uh, if I get a five, then that will go into fire. I doubt I'll get a six, but if I did get a six and we wasted it, then it's whatever. And I did a terrible clone anyway, so... Blue wings. This is what I was talking about. If you hadn't used the mint leaves, um, or hadn't picked up the mint leaves in Solvering, uh, you can pick them up from this lady right here. She gives you mint leaves. And this is technically optimal, but uh, you might, if you have a really bad Zelf's encounter, you might need those mint leaves and then you can restock them. I still think it's worth getting them. That's just me personally. Uh, hey, Vice. Hey, Landmine. How's it going, bud? Open and close this door to flush Larpool, the toilet town thing. This first spirit, uh, right here, is eight seconds out of the way to get. It's eight seconds. I timed it at one point. So this one isn't the worst. To, it's not that bad to get. This one up here is like 15 seconds or something, so... Two. Oh, that one's like 12 or 11 seconds, actually. The other one's like eight seconds. That one is a little worse to get. So at this point, since I have 50 Earth, I'm actually gonna put into fire. I wanna have 50, if you were going to do the West Carmel out of bounds, you wanna have 50 Earth as soon as you get into, into Blue Cave because you will have just enough to get to 19 fire. If you're cloning fours. All right, so this out of bounds, you just pretty much immediately wanna get an encounter. Oh, Peregrine. Thank you for gifting three subs. Enjoy Bolden, Heiner, and Indio. Welcome to Bing's Wings. Enjoy the emotes. All right, so this out of bounds. We are at 65, but the, the aim for this out of bounds is 66. 66 is what you want to be at. I'm going to let that deafen us for a moment. All right, so if you can see where I'm standing, I'm standing in kind of a... Uh, here, let me turn the camera this way. There's three dots. There's one right here. There's one right here. And there's one right here. This triangle is the frame of reference for this out of bounds at 66. Anywhere from like 63 to 66 agility for the out of bounds. This triangle. So where I want to stand is right about in the center like see how i'm kind of in the center closer to the bottom part this is about where you want to stand with the amount of agility i have and these guys hurt so i'm actually going to cast magic barrier they can block your spot so that's not great but if you notice you can you sometimes have to clip up there and this with 65 i'm actually not in the right spot so i actually need to be slightly further to the right for this I didn't move up or down, but I moved slightly to the right in the triangle. This should work, but it might not. Uh, and then this, you want to walk into the corner and slowly turn left, like into the corner and then turn left, and that'll usually clip you down. If you get the clip further down here, where you have to clip down there, sometimes you'll clip into the wall and then back in bounds. That can happen. It's annoying. You gotta like it's for those you have to like immediately let go as soon as you clip out of bounds so you don't clip back in bounds. That's just because the the spot you're clipping onto is quite small. And then for all of these walls, there's kind of a gap between each one. You actually need to um, clip by walking at the wall because these walls are kind of individual planes. You have to walk at the wall. So I'm gonna hopefully that's not gonna work. Worse. Cool. Escape is just an absolute butthead here for some reason. So all these, you see how there's that kind of the corner right there? You have to clip by going that. You can't just, well, sometimes you can. You can't actually, like, make it across. You have to walk directly at the wall and then turn slightly left and it'll let you clip across. Same thing with this one. Clip at the wall. 
look at the wall and then walk into it and then you make it across this is the last one though you just walk along the wall so walk at the wall for everyone but the last one the last one you walk along the wall and it's actual walk not run and then for this the end of the dungeon is about that way more or less we are at the south uh west corner of the map we want to go north and center of the map more or less and we need to go around a uh, path over here the actual the shortcut to glenco we need to go around this path that goes over here so we're gonna go north slightly west i know we're gonna see it in just a moment it should pop up right in the top right corner of the screen taking this a bit sharp and important there you can see the spirit blinking you can see spirits blinking in the distance which is kind of interesting so if you need extra agility this is another spot that you can take an encounter and get a bit of extra agility but what i like to do here is find that spot and clip up it should bring you right here and then we drop down here and there's a couple different ways to do this, but I like to, if, you, if you're not sure about this out of bounds, you can go towards the entrance of the blue maze portion by going almost exactly northeast. And it'll take you to the entrance of the blue maze and you can just run around it that way. Or you can run directly to the end, which is about this angle. This, this actually might be, even be a sharp angle, but this will take us more or less to the end of the, the dungeon in about two minutes it's either a minute 45 or 215 and i don't remember right now it's been a little while i think it's a minute 45. like i said the out of bounds are really really easy as long as you have a spot of, or a frame of reference right if you know what agility you should have and you know the spot that you should use for the remember reference it's really easy to adjust based off of that Why does mine look so pixelated? Probably because it's the HDMI. I don't know. I think it looks... It does look a little pixely more than normal. I don't know. It might be better to go look at an actual run for the angle that I used to go directly at the end. But, uh, alright. So yeah, we can actually see. There's the blue maze portion. I took a harsh angle. So we're actually going to... From here, since I know that because of the routes I used to take for the out of bounds, I know I need to change it to more northward because we're going to run into the way the exit goes. If you get to go to the ends of the, the blue maze portion, it goes up and it curves left and then back right and then up. So we'll run into that curve left and we'll go around it. So we should see that in probably another five or so seconds. Maybe 10 seconds. Maybe I went further than I thought. My, oh, yeah, no, there. I was actually further over. <laughs> Down there, that. We don't want to get an encounter yet. We want to see the end of the area. There we go. And then now we know we're going to run around here. And there is a corner. That dip right there. That is where you can get... That's the edge of the battle arenas in Blue Cave. So you want to run directly at that corner. And then you should flip up and you'll probably get an encounter at the same time. Usually. And you just want to spin right in the spot and agility glitch. You gotta remember to agility glitch. Whatever this encounter is. Soul searcher, and we should have 70 agility. Yeah. Which is perfectly fine. 71 was the goal, but 70 is also functional. It's not a huge difference. And right now, after uh after call hazard is basically when we stop agility glitching constantly and we only agility glitch at the start and end of areas. This is really where it's, you do very specific large agility glitches. So, the safety strat, if you're not going to save at the, um, well, before we do that, there is a spirit over here to the left. You're going to clone it after you fight Nefty. You, if you clone it now, it'll take you to the beginning of Blue Cave. As you fight Nefty and you come back in, your exit point will be set to the door here, and you clone it, it'll take you back to the door. So you don't pick that spirit up yet. Um, and part of that is the setup of exit points is this glitch called Chexit. So if you save at this in, for whatever reason, the, the way the game functions with exit is that every time you go into an area where the exit point gets set, 
uh, if you cast exit in an area that you can cast exit, it'll take you to wherever that last exit point was. So when we entered Blue Cave, the exit point is that entrance. So with Chexit, because the exit point doesn't get reset when you save in here, and when you step out here, this doesn't reset your exit point. So anywhere, if you respawn at the save, step out here, you can cast exit in that area and it'll take you to wherever that last exit point is, including doors in Mammon's world. So it is an excellent safety. It will lose you about a minute-ish. So it's it's an excellent, excellent safety. Generally worth doing uh, for now. So you just save at Chappie and then you don't save anywhere else. So if we die to Nepti, we step out there, cast exit, we'll actually be back in empty or Nepti's area. We don't have to do all this stuff. It's a, it's a very bizarre thing. So if you didn't want to go down there, if you come down here, this is that actually puts us at uh, the Isle of Sky. But we want this MP item because we're low on them. Put that, these in fire. I like to use the right side. Doesn't really make a difference. Whatever your preference is. Put these all in fire. I'm not going to grab that one over there or the one behind the house until after I fight Nepti. It's just unnecessarily out of the way. We really only want to get one encounter here and hopefully no fish stick. No fish stick. And this is about the last spot you can get an encounter. So if you don't get an encounter, it's worth spinning in a circle here. And we got an encounter that's not a fish stick. This is perfect. Even though we, we're gonna, you know, took extra time to get that encounter and stuff, it's worth it just because you either have to, you then have to double dip into the end of Blue Cave to get the correct amount of agility, which is a pain in and of itself. So Nepti sucks. She is the smallest hitbox of any boss, and uh, yeah, she sucks. And something somebody mentioned, uh, trying other spells. This is. This boss is the reason that Squid came up with the fire route. So the range of time for fastest and slowest is going to be Avalanche. Avalanche can kill her in one turn or it can never kill her, right? So that's that's our range. One turn death, never death. That's our range. Fireball 3, if done optimally, is kind of in the middle. It's never going to be as fast as Earth or Avalanche just because Avalanche is so freaking broken. But it, it'll be consistently within this kind of time where it'll take anywhere from like 10 to 14 turns if you do it optimally just because of how much damage it'll do and, you know, always actually making the spell interact with her hitbox. But Avalanche is just so broken that there's no reason not to do Avalanche. So I like to run up to her, cast Magic Barrier, and then stand just outside of her Water Ball thing. Cast Avalanche, and I just missed. I need to be a step closer. If she does her long range attack, you can actually start to cast a spell after the first uh, bubble. So, so I can start casting a spell there. We're about at the range I want to be, so I'm just going to cast Avalanche. We hit her once. Great. One is great. Any hits are great, you know? So I'm going to go full range here. I like the confusion. I try not to use MP on these fights, and she's going to be a butthead and walk up to me. I, I tend to be a bit aggressive. I'm going to use a healing item here just for safety. You don't have to. But again, how. Really? Get your barrier now. Now is not the fucking time. So, if you want to dodge her attacks, it's right, right, left to dodge it if you're far enough away. You will always dodge her attacks. Now she's being nice and doing that consistently. Three. Magic barrier don't love me. Three. 
<laughs> yeah, this is how you should. Yeah, this is. This is nifty. Yeah, this fight would still be trash if Magic Barrier didn't miss. This fight sucks. Put it bluntly. It's because Avalanche. Avalanche and Nefty are just. a pain. You'll generally do one magic bubble, the long range attack, and then walk up to your close range, usually. Or, I think. Please. Also, the camera turning. I want her to walk up. Might even be worth doing a hard save at um at uh, Chappie in case this battle goes as bad as it's going right now. Yeah, confusion can miss. It's great. She needs one more. Your loss. <laughs> be completely honest. Your loss. It's worth doing. It's better to finish a run to have something to compare it against personally. I fucking hate my ding. Nice lucky dodge. Have I mentioned this boss sucks? Because this boss sucks. Please. God, that was a terrible fight. So, 10, 11, 12, 13, I would need to get a 6, so I'm not going to have quite enough fire. Ah, fair. Until you finish a run, I would still, it's still worth saving here and there. It's not the end of the world. I think. I'm not gonna fight these guys, I'm just going to escape with them. Uh, what's our experience? I might. Now that doesn't kill them, I thought that would. I save 100. I actually don't know how much HP these guys have. I'm going to waste time to specifically get 19 um, fire. So ignore you would normally have 19 fire here. Just ignore what I'm doing. This is not This is called me being wanting to make sure I get enough. Cause I wanna I wanna show you the East Limeland. That was like nothing not worth doing. Die, not him. So none of this fight that I'm doing right now you would ignore, <laughs> but pick up these spirits. 
You don't need to get the one behind the house if you already have enough to get 19. Um, but if you if you don't, it's worth grabbing it just to because you want to get the 19 fire. So now that our exit point uh, was been set to be inside or the front of the house, we can exit clone this one. All right, so I need one more level. This is pretty much what I expected. We can actually get the boat spirit, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fight anymore. So. If we had saved before the boat and not done the Chegzit setup, we would take an encounter here and die to it. And then we would respawn um, right before the boat. Instead, we take this encounter, immediately leave said encounter, obviously Soul Searcher out, cast exit, and we actually do the intended path thing to get out of here, which is to go into here. And it'll take us to the entrance of Lara Pool, and then we run to the boat. This is the part where you lose time, it's this walk. Depends on how many encounters you get. If you get no encounters, you only lose like 15 to 30 seconds, it's not bad. But you're generally gonna get a couple encounters and you want to agility glitch whatever the first encounter is because your goal is to have 84 agility by the time you get into Baragoon Tunnel. Because the fastest enemy, a ghost, has 84 agility. I have 83, so I'll probably have to do one more agility glitch. I'll probably just do, if, if the encounter is far enough away, I'll do it here. I'll do this one. These encounters aren't particularly scary. I'm not too worried about them doing damage or anything. Six. But if we had gotten 71 agility at the beginning uh, of the Isle of Sky, like at the end of Blue Cave the first time, then we'd have 84 right now. That's part of the reason the route's the way it is. You just get exactly enough. Three encounters. So normally you would just go to East Lyman here, but I want 19 fire so I can show off compression. So we're gonna take a little bit of extra time to grab the stupid spirit, the worst spirit in the game. This spirit. Spirit's dumb. There's no reason for it to exist. There's no indication that it exists. No one tells you that it exists. Yeah. It's the stupidest spirit. I hate it. That's just a backup spirit. Okay, no one in game tells you it exists. Alright, so hopefully, if you want to do the out of bounds here, the very optimal encounter is getting a, um, and I'm just gonna agility glitch. Normally, if you did the other route, the death route without, um, the Chegzit, you would do an agility glitch on whatever this first encounter is. It is gonna seem hard. And we have enough agility now. So, we want a Scarecrow. Preferably, you'd get, like, one Scarecrow right up against this wall. You can also do this little wyvern. Wyverns are significantly easier to set up for. This is also why we wanted a Celine's Bell, because um, because this sucks. All right, that was dumb. I'm gonna take damage like an idiot. Man, that was being risky. Only a Scarecrow. And our goal is to get him right up against the wall. And this is all I'm doing, the confusion, the healing. I would, Normally you would start with a magic barrier instead of what I'm doing. I'm just being aggressive for no reason. Um, this is just how you die. That's how you die. Of course Magic Barrier misses, why wouldn't it miss? So, the setup for that Out of Bounds can be very, uh, 
unpleasant. That's why I like a ceiling's bell, because this out of bounds sucks. Oh, Chigzit doesn't. Chigzit doesn't work from there. I. Well, you know what? I don't know if Chigzit works from there. I don't think it would, and I actually haven't tried. But I'm pretty sure Chigzit would have just done nothing. A hundred percent chance to miss when I need it not to. But we'll have good MP, so that's nice. We're usually to get into Baragoon Tunnel with like 19 and change. But we have a lot more MP because I've taken my time. I guess it depends which boat it takes you to, but I don't know if it if it would or wouldn't do the walk again. I do want to do the out of bounds, so I'll just show the wyvern out of bounds instead. Unless we get unless we get a singular scarecrow up against the wall, which is I think an uncommon encounter. Usually that three with a scarecrow is the one I usually get. Of these guys. And you don't need to agility glitch at this point. You just want to get out of encounters ASAP. All these enemies are slow, they all hit hard. This is where it gets tedious. If you didn't get an encounter and your first encounter was right here and you got a scarecrow, you can do the same out of bounds here. At that point, it's still worth it. Um, you can always grab this spirit to the right over here, but I would generally skip it if you have if you're if you have 50 earth, plenty of water, and you have at least 19 fire. I would skip that out of bounds or that fire, that spirit over there. It's just kind of yeah. Uh, yes, but at there's a point where it's not worth doing, right? Once you get around that past corner where I said this is like over there, that's the last spot you would want to do it, right? Right about. Here, you don't want to go anywhere past here, it's not worth doing it with a Scarecrow anymore. Like, if it was your first encounter and you got a Scarecrow, it's still worth doing the out-of-bounds there. But at that point, you might as well run over here and get a Wyvern, because one, you can dodge their attacks, two, they are significantly easier to set up with an out-of-bounds. Just thousands of times easier. And the out-of-bounds doesn't save a huge amount of time, only if it's done optimally, and it usually isn't because scarecrows are bastards and slow. I like Wyvern. We got lucky. We got a. Uh, okay. Come on. Yeah, great. Perfect. That was lucky. The Wyvern's gonna run up. He's gonna do this. I'm gonna go. I don't care. I'm gonna cast compression. I'm gonna miss because of the game. You do that, and I'm gonna turn up here a little bit more. There we go. Because he's gonna, he's he takes wide, all flying enemies take wide turns, and I'm just gonna, when they're up against the wall, you can actually push them off the wall. So when I'm here now, I'm gonna use magic barrier, and I'm gonna wait for him to go back to normal size. And when he does, he'll take up to six turns, because why not? He'll push us out of bounds. Very, very easy to do. You can always throw fireball two or three at enemies if there's only one enemy and they're close enough. That'll actually also an effective way to get MP if you have the fire level for it. So when you're out of bounds here, um, if you're low agility, you actually want to run over to that spot down there, right here-ish, and get an encounter for an agility glitch, but that's if you're below 84. If you're not below 84, then you just ignore that. And you go over to where that spirit is, and it'll drop you down. You can grab that spirit. Not really, it's not out of the way, because you have to go right next to it anyway. So you drop down, grab the spirit, put it. I put it in fire at this point. Once you have 19 fire, it doesn't matter. You can put it in water or fire. It makes no difference as long as you don't put it in wind. For this, you can run full speed. You don't have to do anything special. You just run full speed. I like to aim to the left, and it'll clip you back in bounds. It's very convenient that that exists. 
now that we are here, we are going to grab these items. Uh, the fastest enemy here is 80, has 84 agility, which is the, um, the ghost. We're going to do one agility glitch at the very beginning, and then we're going to do one agility glitch uh, after the out of bounds. And those are the only two agility glitches we're going to do here. No agility glitch, whatever this is, will o wisp they're scary. Run perpendicular, hopefully you can dodge one of the attacks. Looks like we got lucky. And Soul Searcher. You probably won't have 20 uh, MP here unless you do the defense grind. If you do the defense grind, then you'll have 88, 82, that's uh, 88 agility is fine. We'll be good on MP. Uh, usually you wouldn't get here with this much MP. That rarely happens because we're taking extra time to do stuff. Uh, it'd be a bit slower. If you can get out first turn, cast Soul Searcher. If you can't, cast Escape. You know, if there's three enemies and you're really low on MP, maybe take an extra turn. But always try to just get out and full search. And once you have 21 MP, just stop. You don't need to get any more MP. It's just a waste of time at that point. You don't want to try to get past these guys. Will-O-Wisp will absolutely kill you. They hit you with Fireball too, and they'll probably do like 80% of your HP. They hit hard, dude. Next room is the corner that exists that we can just walk into. And this is the one where I talk about you really want to very slowly turn back and forth because sometimes the angle isn't always the nicest, but if you just like slightly wiggle back and forth, sometimes that'll get you just a bit further into the wall and it'll push you out. This one I like to run directly at the center of the wall and turn left. That's my personal preference. It seems to work well for me. But it's this corner here, just walk into the corner and then turn left. Oh, that time I got the right side. You can get boosted out the right side, but I find the left side more consistent, personally. Uh, at this point, once you're out of bounds, you run north. Past the walls. Once you get past there, count to two, one, two. Because you don't want to be too close to there or you can get an encounter. So I'm going to run eastward here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I know I'm past this. You can take this angle southeast to where that spirit is, and I think you can probably maybe see it. No, it's not blinking right now. You can go towards that spirit, but I know where the pathing is, so I'm going to take this angle right here. And I'm going to, because they're down and then down, so it goes down and then down the path, and I want to hit this second, like, corner. I know more or less where it is. This is that long bridge mineshaft portion. So there it is. I see it down there. You see it popping up in the bottom of the screen. You probably just barely see it. It's a lot darker. If you're looking at a TV, it's down here. I can't really see it on my screen right now, but there's the pathing you can see just kind of down here. And you'll see it pop up on your screen. But once you see that, you want to run exactly east, making sure you don't hit that. And this is the fun setup. So we're going to run east until Brian walks into the wall. We'll know because Brian zooms into the screen. We are then going to use something that Squid thought of that's very convenient. Every time Brian starts moving, um, he throws off a dust cloud. So we're going to start and stop moving over and over again, running northeast. So see how that is that dust cloud? We're going to turn northeast and we're going to use that dust cloud to let us know when we're actually running eastward right about here we're gonna go one two three and then turn southeast and then we're gonna run along the wall it's gonna turn us to eastward then three two one drop a little too early huh and it should drop you down here you don't need to do this but it's much 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 harder to get to the end if you can't see it so the end is about this height so this gives us a nice convenient height to work with Grab the spirit because it's not out of the way. Free damage, and then we run uh, more east than north. You want to just kind of barely pass the corners because this area goes east and north and east and north and east and north. You don't want to get too close, but you want to be you want to visually see it so that you you know you know where you are. You don't get too lost. That's the second one, and then the third one. We're just going to stay east after we get there. So last one is there going to go around it, make sure we don't get an encounter. 
Yeah, it's a lot darker on stream than it is on my computer. I've fiddled with the colors so much that I can't get it to look the same. You can see the spirit blinking slightly in the distance. It's useful as a, a point of reference. And this is where we're going to do our big agility glitch. It should take us to like 91, 92. Probably 92. Um, I think we'll get three agility out of this. Towards this last column right here. Because this is where the battle arena always will kind of end up. Run out. Full search. We should have 92. And then we run... You can run exactly east until you hit the wall, or you can run slightly north east to a very slightly north. If you don't want to go too far, you'll miss the exit. But you also don't want to fight uh, Shilf from Out of Bounds, or you'll lose. You cannot beat her from Out of Bounds with the spells we have. And the items we have. You just... You'll have a bad time. very slightly see the exit and go to the exit you know pretty standard getting back inbounds type of thing here and then for this you want to turn east there's that tree there I kind of use that as a point of reference um, and go slightly to the right of it right along this path if we see a sandman which we won't these guys have 95 agility they're the fastest enemy in the area if we had seen any other enemy, we would have been able to agility glitch, but we didn't, so. Um, if we had seen a Sandman, uh, they use Magnet Rock. Run up a hill. You will get, you. the attack will miss, but the uh, the hitbox of the attack lingers for like a solid second and a half. So you have to wait a second and a half before you move back down, or you'll run into the hitbox. But if you go up, it the, the attack doesn't follow you up a hill. So, um, like, you could just go this way. Here, let me... Let's see if I can do it here. So he'll attack, I'll run up the hill, dodge it. If I ran back down too early, it would hit me. But you can dodge it just by going up a hill if you have enough of an uphill. I have 21 MP, so I'm going to stop MP grinding here. Generally, you probably have about 20 and change here. This is a good spot for large enemies. If you get Magnafish encounters, they're really good because they're not too scary. Their AI is super duper consistent. Uh, if they're too far away, uh, you can also grab that spirit. If they're too far away, they move closer and you use uh, spirit armor. If they're close enough, they they use um, magma ball. That is their AI. Very, very consistent. So you could, if you've got five of them like this, you could, you know, soul search. Soul search. Soul search. Run right. But, you know, like, those, en those encounters aren't going to take a whole lot of time. They're very... Not bad, not laggy. Usually you get four or five of them. But they're a pretty good encounter to use. I pick up that replica as just an extra safety item. You can skip it. It's not necessary. It only saves like six or seven seconds if you don't get it. But it's worth having if you get lucky in an encounter in Mammon's World. Running along these walls here. And running south here. Soul searching if you need the MP again, pretty, you know, we're pretty much out of uh, any fancy schmancy stuff. There's one more out of bounds and the rest of the game is very straightforward. We got that spirit. I skipped the other one because I'm not thinking. Fire, whatever. And then I have a split here, and then the last out of bounds. You can do a compression out of bounds. You want to use the magma fish. It's not too bad to set up, but they hit hard. Um, but optimally, uh, come down here. We're actually going to agility glitch whatever the first. Uh, you might not agility glitch a rocky encounter, but you're going to agility glitch anything else just because the MP is nice to have. You want 95 going into Brunak Castle, which you generally get. But we want an encounter. See this. This little splotch right there. Here. Let me do this. There's this line from this splotch to this splotch. This is what you're going to use as a reference for the out of bounds here, right? Depending on how much agility you have. I have 95, so I'm going to stand like right in the middle, closer, a little bit closer to uh, this one. So probably right about here is where I'm going to stand. But you want to be here and you want to just spin in a circle here for an encounter because there's a gap where you can't get an encounter, and hopefully you get these guys, because they are the least scary. Turn the camera, stand on this spot, right 
You're actually no. Yeah. So a little bit almost on that uh, dot on the bottom side now that I'm looking at it. He should move up. Not that it matters. I'm just gonna use magic barrier. This is a safety. You're gonna use boots. And the whole point of this, to have the boots and having that spot with the amount of agility, is that we can go out of bounds up here. And this should set up nicely. Then we just walk into the corner, and you clip out of bounds. Right here. Very, very easy. From that reference point. If you have different amounts of agility, you have to slightly adjust up or down, and you have to hope the boots last more than one turn. There is another way to do it, where you slide out of the encounter with your agility, but that's a lot harder to do. Because getting that consistent slide is just a pain. We're going to run south a bit to get around this part so we don't get into another encounter. And this dungeon is eastward. Yeah, also, yeah, you need Magic Barrier for them. One, they're going to do an absolute butt-ton of damage, but also uh, that spell cleanses buffs. Alright, so this area down here I use as my reference point. Um, for my split, but this, once this disappears in the bottom left corner, and I'm running exactly east, when this disappears in the bottom left corner, right now, a minute 14 from when that disappears, you will get into an encounter if you're running exactly east. One minute and 14 seconds. Plus or minus one second. But you should, you should almost always get an encounter in a minute 14. agility glitch, whatever this encounter is, even if it's a rocky, just because it's worth worth having a little bit of extra agility. Our goal is to have 95 by Brunach Castle. At this point, anything extra is not a big deal. It's a bonus. It doesn't matter if we have more, but the bare minimum, we, don't, we have to have 95, because a Red Rose Knight will one-shot us at this HP amount. And we will... This is the... This is the last or second to last agility glitch that you'll probably do. Um, at the beginning of Brunach Castle, we should get an encounter now. Yep, there it is. Agility glitch. Let him attack. Run at the wall so you drop down in height and then run out. And you can use Soul Searcher, obviously, for MP. And then we're going to run around. Make sure we not get an encounter. You can fight Fargo from out of bounds. You can cheese him, even. So I can see the end of the map just barely at the top of the screen right now, but the camera keeps panning down, so you can't quite see it. Um, it's up there at the top. However, if you need to set it up and you can't quite see it, if you run into this corner, the corner where we would fight him from, the corner where the spirit is, you can pick up the spirit if you want to. If you run exactly east, this will take you to the end. From that spot. So you, that's a nice little setup if you can't can't quite see the end. You just go into that corner where that spirit is and then run exactly east. It'll pop you up and then you'll be able to touch the end. Just like that. Yeah, that command is from July last year. Alright, and we're going to... It's worth grabbing some extra spirits here. Like, this one over here is, uh... Don't need to get it, but it's only, like... Eight seconds out of the way, so it's not too bad. Some of the earlier ones are the ones you would skip. These ones, it's not as big a deal. That extra little oomph is nice to have. So for these ones, you always want to get this, the chest by the door. This one's an MP item. I like to get both of these items. One of these is um, a replica, and the other one is a ceiling spell. So we now have three safety items for Mammoth World, which is nice. Um, only really want to get this item. This is a healing item. This chest is boots, and this chest is a silver amulet. You don't want either of those. We used to pick up boots for Bygis, which is why I know what those chests are. But you don't need to get either of those ones in that first room. And where the game really begins to show uh, they ran out of time, 
But this little area right here is encounters. You just want to run along the wall, and you will not get encounters. Because, I don't know. I really don't know why, but you just don't get encounters, so run along the wall. So there's three spirits out here that you could clone, depending on how much extra damage you want to get. I generally only clone this one to here, because it's the closest. The other two take a little bit longer to get to. You can clone all three, it's extra damage. These are the ones that I, I usually make a save file here with uh, not full elements. That's what I have for the practice, is a save file before getting any of these three. So this is the second furthest one. And then the one on the bridge. So generally I would only get the one that's over here, but I'm just showing you these. And for this one, run along this left wall. There are encounters up here, but if you run along the wall, again, you don't get encounters because reasons. I don't know what those reasons are, but there's a reason. And you just do the same thing. The return clone. Um, I'm actually going to make a... You're not gonna make a save. There's really nothing special from here on out. This is just kind of boss fights and stuff. So if I die, I die. And the, all the beginning of the run is the important stuff, really. Um, so again, another thing. Uh, run along this wall to the left because you don't get encounters. There are encounters here. But if you run along this wall, you will not get encounters. I assume it has to do with how the game calculates whether it can give you an encounter or something about the battle arena and something about these walls just break it. I don't know, but you don't get encounters. Which is nice. So, when I was saying the second to last or last agility glitch, depending on what our first encounter is in this area is what, what whether you do an agility glitch. If you see all white road knights, then it is safe to do an agility glitch. Um, but if you see a red road knight or you don't see all the enemies, it's not worth doing it. I'm going to do it no matter what now because I have Chigs that set up and I just want to show Chigs at all. We set our exit point to that entrance right now and we got red rose knights. They might kill me. Uh, he actually did. We got lucky. But they can one shot us. Right? I just did an agility glitch. I probably have 102, 101 maybe. 101. Just gonna heal real quick. So, no matter what, the exit point in Brunach Castle is this first door. So, unfortunately, Chigzit is only somewhat useful here. But it'll take us right back to Brunach Castle. That's why Chigzit's really good. If we die too guilty, we get put here. We don't have to walk all the way to the castle. We're already at the castle. If you die to Bogus, you have to walk this entire castle again, which sucks. So don't die to Bogus. Because uh, Chexit is really, 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 really good in Mammon's World. Because if you die to a Pinhead, you only lose like 45 seconds instead of the run being over. Yeah, I, I, that's my only guess, but I, I genuinely don't know why it does it. And this, if you had, uh, if you didn't have 21 MP, this is where you would use, um, uh, homing arrow. I always forget the name of the attack. If you needed to get MP. And you would just do, do one per an encounter. Like, I'd run out here, I'd, you know, go out, I'd cast homing arrow too. Try to get as many hits. That's five hits, right? Five experience. Do one per an encounter, and if you're not done by the time you get to, uh, guilty, then you just grind a little bit there. Pick up this item. This is a, I think it's a, yeah, it's an MP item. We need every MP item at this point. You want to use no more than four MP items on uh, Guilty, um, two on Bogus, and anything left on on Mammon. And there's no more agility glitching or anything at this point. So it's it, this is. Pretty much just a run straight to the end. The only thing, only really last thing that I want to show you is that there's a position. Uh, our stat goals is to have 95 agility by the time you get into Brunach Castle. And then 50 earth by the time you're... Uh, pretty much by the time you're fighting Nepti is the goal. And you, so that you can get 19 fire after Nepti. Or by, 
so that you get fire, active fire benefit. That's why, so if you get like a, if you get like a 19 water dupe, um, that's why you'd only go to 25 water and then everything into earth at that point. Because if you get up to 50 earth, then you can start putting it in fire, and if you get 19 fire by the time you get to West Karma, you can still do the compression out of bounds, right? That's why. But if you don't want to do that compression out of bounds, then you don't need to worry about putting anything into fire, and you can just max water out after you get 50 earth. But more spirits is better, but don't go out of your way to get too many. That's really... whatever you feel comfortable with is really what it is. We will get one shot by Guilty uh, if Magic Barrier misses. Just saying. Um, so the only thing that I have to say is that there is a... there are kind of grid lines on every map. And there are spots where it's more likely for Avalanche to drop rocks. Well, Guilty ha happens to be standing exactly in the center of his room, which is a perfect spot. So, preferably, we want to stand, and I'll use the finger for this, we want to stand right there at the top of this diamond, right in front of him. We want to stand right at the top, because that'll make him do his close range attack, and you'll be at the exact distance for to cast Avalanche, and he's in the center of the room, so rocks are more likely to drop on him. So if you can set up there, it's perfect. That's why we, like, 101 agility is just enough to put you there. So I'm gonna go stand here. He might move. I'm not quite far enough, but he also might just attack. And he moved. So if he moves, then you just want to run around. And the edge of his... You want to line up if you can in, like, kind of the center. The edge of his close range attack is where you want to stand for avalanche. Right there. I like to do a 45 degree angle. I don't know if it matters, just personal preference. But you want to be at the exact, like you want to be bisected by the edge of his spell. Or oh, we're, we're in the exact right spot. And then you just hope Magic Berry doesn't miss. six if it does miss don't immediately cast it right away because you you'll generally have the exact same thing happen wait an extra second before you cast it the second time it's the rng is kind of weird with magic barrier missing so like if it misses one time and then you cast it the exact same there's a greater chance of it missing even though it's technically random seven eight yeah, the 45 degree angle is the other one. It'll be about 20 hits, I think. Nine. Okay, well, if that happens, then we... Then do that. And now, since I have 3 MP, uh, we have a mint leaves somewhere, I think. Oh, no, we don't have it, because I had to use it. Uh... So, yeah, we're gonna have to do this. What did I say I have? Eight? Something? I like to not move just because it, it doesn't waste time for him moving around. Uh, it that's up to how comfortable you are. Yeah, it's more that like for that missing twice in a row is more just how I think how the game calculates its randomness. Elements. 
Uh, not really. We're, we're low on MP items. Like, we only have... We have one more MP item, so... We're gonna pick up three more. So we can use maybe one MP item on Bogus. Yeah, not dying is good, but we, we're very low on MP items. So it's worth... It's probably worth getting that extra MP item in more moon. Just because having one extra. If you had to use the, the mint leaves on Nepti, it's probably worth picking the extra mint leaves up again from uh, the uh, the inn in Lara Pool. Alright, so that chest to the right, that one's an MP item. Or no, that one's, a, that one's an HP item. This one's an MP item. So you want to go left and grab the MP item. I don't need the HP item, and then we're gonna go out here and then turn left again, and the exit is the southmost portion of this room. If I hadn't skipped it, it'd be fine, but it is what it is. Alright. I'm, I'm thinking about explaining not uh, optimal item usage. Fine. The rest of the run is pretty kind of straightforward, so it's not a... doesn't. If I die, it's not a big deal. The rest of it is pretty kind of self-explanatory, more or less. Alright, so the only item that's an MP item is this one, as I recall. Yep. And then you can also pick up the spirit here. Uh, one and three are both healing items, so that's one. Two is a... I don't remember. That's a healing item. That's... Uh, I think that one's a, an, an amulet we don't care about. That's the empty item. And now we just... There's really only like one or two kind of minor things here on out. There's really nothing that special from this point on. Um, this chest is an HP item. For whatever reason, you can clip into the back of it because reasons. That's an HP item. I don't really care. Hi, Dad. Bye, Dad. You know, blah, blah, blah. The other item is like a, is it, you know, we don't care about that. The game is very, very front-loaded with information. The back end is very... Hope you don't die. <laughs> I think it's an amulet, but I don't remember. Alright, so bogus. I like to get go directly at this path over here. Because that's where you need to do anyway. Run up here, cast Magic Barrier. You'll probably walk up and do a sword, maybe? Did a sword. If you can get close enough, use uh, Avalanche. But otherwise, throw the Kobe. There's one rock, it'll do that about that much damage. We're going to run as far as right here. Oh, by the way, that this spot right here... This is how the Battle Arena clip and the clip in Barragoon Tunnel was found, because this corner. If you go out of bounds of this corner, if there's still a Bogus, you can die. But if Bogus is dead and you go out of bounds in this corner, you soft lock the game. You cannot get out of this room. But this is the corner that Squid found that led to the Battle Arena clip and the out of bounds in Barragoon Tunnel. So, I... did I... I'm gonna magic barrier again. This is where we'd use our mint leaf if we had. I want to get him away from the edge because rocks falling off the edge is laggy. Hey, school. I mean, you could do weakness, but. Eh. And you just try to hit him. I hope he takes enough hits. Do. Jesus. 
Zero, thanks for another gifted sub. School, enjoy the emotes, my dude. Notoriously a poopy fight for me. He has the same. His hitbox is. His width is the same as Nepti, but his his length from front to back is a. Uh, he's bigger. And we'll see if I beat Mammon. Three more, so we're at six. What's our MP items? We got. Three. Um, please one more. He, he indeed does have a booty. He only takes like seven or ten ish hits. Uh, seven, eight, I think. I want him to not walk. Oh, he can kill us here. Well, yeah, if he does that, he definitely kills us. His close range is a range. His long range will absolutely kill us. But yeah, that's the gist of it. I'm... If if we cast Chegzit here, unfortunately, it puts us at the very beginning of the castle, which is a long walk. And I don't have enough MP items. I'd have to one turn... I'd have to one turn by just at this point, and it's pointless. So, uh, yeah, but if you die in Mammoth's World, Chigzit is really good because you can get out. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Unfortunately, we died, but that's the way it goes. You know, I expect no less. Um,